If you're still treating email categories like digital sticky notes, you are missing a massive opportunity. Categories aren't just for tidying up your inbox. They can become really powerful triggers for automation, saving you genuinely hours every week. And in this video, I'm going to unlock a little known powerhouse inside Microsoft 365. It's called the Graph API, and it can take simple categories from your email and turn them into an engine of action, organization, and smart workflows. So if you're ready to start automating responses to your emails instead of manually processing everything, then watch on. The first thing to say is that when you intercept an email using Power Automate using the when a new email arrives trigger, there is a lot of data that you can intercept. You can intercept who it's been sent to, you can intercept who it's come from, you can gather lots of information, particularly about where it's landed, and then perform automations based upon that information. But when you go and look at how much information this trigger actually captures out of the box, you are slightly limited. If I expose it using this compose action here, you'll see there are 27 data items that this trigger will gather from your email. You can determine whether it's an email that's been sent with high importance or who it's been sent from, and that's fantastic. But when it comes to categories, if you scan this list, there is no category that you can pull in that you can then perform an automation as a result of. So let's take an example, an email's arrived, I've categorized that email in my inbox with the category that says create a planner task. I might have multiple categories, some of which remind me to reply to something, some of which remind me to flag it to the team members in Teams. But in this particular one, that category is driving a very unique automation that I'd like to achieve. How can I do that? For those of you who just want the answer, you can skip this short section. But for those of you who like to build and understand what you're building and want to go deeper into the capabilities of Power Automate, watch this next section closely. Navigate to the Graph Explorer. I'll pop the link on screen so you can use it. On the left hand side, you've got a whole bunch of queries which have been set up for you to experiment with. I'm going to just choose one of the simple ones, the My Mail. When you click on it, you'll notice that that query gets populated here in this test area. Make sure you're signed in using an account which you can experiment with and that has permissions to your emails. And then all you do is run that query. You'll notice down below it completed successfully but when you look at the values that have been returned you'll notice a whole bunch of very familiar information about emails. So your importance level for that email and just above it you'll notice categories. So what that tells you is that the Graph API can return more information about your emails than the out-of-the-box Power Automate flow action can. So what we can now do is exploit that knowledge to refine that query that we've created and only ask for emails where a category has been set to a specific value. That's the first part we need to overcome. Now if you know how to interact with the Graph API, you'll find this next part easy. But if you don't, here's a shortcut. Take a copy of that query that you've got there and head to whatever AI tool that you like to use. Type in this prompt, how would I adapt this query to only bring back emails from my inbox where the create a task category has been set and then paste the query in. And let Copilot do the work of figuring out the parameters, the setup and the message that you need to write. Here we've been given back an alternative query Let's give it a go. We'll copy it and replace the one that we had before. Now you might see errors like this. It's worthwhile just trying to run the query to see if it works. Now you'll notice that query actually ran. And interestingly, it brought back an email. Now the reason it's brought back that email is because behind the scenes I've been and set that category, as you can see there. So it does look to have worked, even though we have this possible error. It's always worth just trying a few experiments with different AI engines if you want to, but also let's go and give this a go and see if it works for us. If not, we can go back to AI and explain the error. So now we have a query that we think we can use. We're gonna change tack on our flow. Create a scheduled cloud flow. Decide on the schedule that you want to run it under. I'd like to run this every two hours. So every two hours, I want to scan my email, look for that category, and then do something. The action we're now going to use is what's called an HTTP action. 
What that means is an action designed to allow us to interact, in this case, with the Graph API. And we're looking for one that's under the Office 365 Outlook group. You'll notice it's a little bit similar to what we saw with the Graph Explorer. But what we're looking for is that query that we just copied and pasted from the Graph Explorer, paste it in. And that's pretty much all you need to do. You can have a look at the advanced parameters. We don't need to worry about this yet. Let's just save it and give it a go. That's all works successfully. And if we click on this action here and go and look at the outputs, we're hoping to see an email and we're looking for the body of the response and the values that it's returned. Each value represents an individual email. Here I have one email, which is what I expect. And if I look closely, I can see I've got a category for the email called create a task. And I've got a, hi, I'm looking for the new staff onboarding list. That is the email that we received here into our inbox. So we know that that API call has worked. We've now got the raw materials to go and perform Power Automate automations using that information. But there's one final thing that you must do before you go any further to allow you to use this information in a meaningful way with Power Automate. The first thing to do is when you've got this successful run, just take a copy of all of that output. The reason we do that is because we're now going to go and edit. And we're going to introduce an action called Pass JSON. What this will do is take the information that's been retrieved here and put it into chunked up human and machine readable format so we can then take pieces from it and use it as we need. But in order to do that, we need to give it a schema so it understands what to expect when it receives the data. And the reason we copy and pasted that information from the successful run is because you can click the use sample payload to generate schema. So I've clicked that and paste the information in from that successful run. And then what will happen is, hey presto, it will understand the structure of the data it expects to receive. Now all we need to do is give it the data. And in the dynamic content, we'll choose the body, that big blob of information that's just come back from the HTTP request. Give that a save. And we'll give it one final test before I show you how you can use this in Power Automate. So we see now if we click on Pass JSON and we go and have a look at the outputs from that JSON, what we've got now is a nice chunked up set of information from that email that's been filtered and retrieved. So if we head back into edit mode now and we'll just recap, you've now got all of the emails according to that filter that you set. So just the create a task categorized emails. You've got the data chunked up in a way that you can use it. You can now iterate through each of these emails, perhaps using an apply to each loop and perform a task. And you can use the data that's present in that past JSON action for each of those loops. So for example, create a planner task, you could take the subject from that particular action there for each of these emails and build your planner tasks. I'll go into that in plenty of detail in other videos, but if you want to discuss this further, maybe set something up for your business using this kind of email filtering and categorization, get in touch, drop me a reply, and I'm happy to have a chat. For now, don't forget to like and subscribe on this video to help me know that you'd like more of them, and I will see you very soon in the next one.